Right. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this, the third meeting in 2015 of the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee. Uh, can I welcome all members, welcome our witnesses, who I'll come to in a second, and welcome visitors joining us in the gallery. And can I remind everyone, please, to turn off or at least turn to silent all mobile phones and other electronic devices so they don't interfere with the sound equipment. Uh, item uh, one on uh, the agenda is in relation to witness expenses, and I would ask if the committee are happy to delegate to the convener responsibility for arranging for the SPCB to pay, under Rule 12.4.3, any expenses of witnesses in the inquiry. Agreed. Is that agreed? Yeah. Thank you. That is agreed. Item two on the agenda. Uh, can I ask the committee if the committee are happy to take item four, which is a review of uh, evidence heard uh, today in private and also whether to uh, agree to review the evidence heard at future meetings and draft reports in private. Is that agreed? Agreed. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, item three on the agenda. We now move to a uh, continuation of our evidence taking on our inquiry into the economic impact of the creative industries. And I'd like to welcome our panel today. Uh, we are joined, uh, starting on the left-hand side, by uh, Janet Archer, uh, and Natalie Usher, Janet being Chief Executive and Natalie, Director of Film and Media at Creative Scotland. Welcome. Uh, David Smith, Director of Creative Industries and Scottish Enterprise. Welcome. And Charlotte Wright, Director of Business and Sector Development, Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Welcome to you all. Um, now, we have about uh, 90 minutes uh, for this uh, session, um, and that time will disappear very quickly, I'm sure. Um, so I would remind members, if they can, to keep their questions as short and to the point, and uh, answers as short and to the point would be very helpful in getting through the topics in the time available. Um, and I would ask members if, if they would, given we have a panel of four people, uh, initially to direct uh, questions to one member of the panel, um, and then uh, if other members of the panel wish to respond to uh, a question addressed to someone else, if you just catch my eye, I will do my best to bring you in uh, as time uh, allows. And that way I hope we'll get through the topics in the time uh, available to us. And there are three kind of broad areas I think we want to cover. One's around uh, computer games, one's around film, and one's around TV. Although, of course, there'll be quite a lot of crossover between the three um, uh, subject areas. Now, I don't know if you've um, had an opportunity to review the evidence that we've heard previously as a committee. We had some written evidence and we've been taking evidence for the last two weeks, first of all from the game sector and then last week from film and TV. Um, I think it's only fair to you to put to you some of the points that have been raised uh, with us. And I'm just going to read out a few, a few quotes if I can. Um, in, in terms of the written submissions, we heard from uh, TRC Media about the absence of a single leadership role in the public sector for the sector. Uh, Tiernan Kelly of Film City Glasgow said the relationship between Creative Scotland and Scottish Enterprise needs immediate attention. Metaphorically, it is a failing marriage. David Griffiths, who's an independent feature film producer, said Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland have not worked well together. Cameron Fraser of Colick Film talked about systemic neglect and the complete absence of vision from public funders. And that was just the written evidence last week we heard from uh, Jane Muirhead from the Producers Alliance for Cinema and Television, who said that the independent television and sector in Scotland feels we fall between Creative Scotland and Scottish Enterprise, and that no one takes ownership of our sector. And John Archer, who's a, from the Independent Producer Scotland, said, it's a great shame that Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland cannot work together. That's a fairly damning set of criticisms of the work you are doing. Maybe I could start with yourself, David Smith from Scottish Enterprise. Why, why are you getting this so wrong? Uh, well, we're aware of some of the views expressed, convener. However, uh, based on our uh, experience and based on the evidence we have, uh, we, we believe there's a great deal of appreciation for the work that we and Creative Scotland and others do in the creative industries. You know, overall, creative industries are thriving and growing here in Scotland. Uh, I know you've heard this before, uh, particularly in the first panel session on, on games, but I think it bears repeating to the top global selling games. Grand Theft Auto V, Rock, produced by Rockstar North, and Minecraft, produced by 4J Studios, are both produced here in Scotland. Uh, collectively, we see enormous growth potential across the creative industries, and we're very clear on the respective contributions and roles that we play in supporting businesses and creative organisations to seize the opportunities. 
all the people who are telling us that there's a lack of leadership, a lack of focus, they're just wrong. I, I think we can point to the fact we work in partnership across the organisations, particularly through the uh, under the chair chair of Janet Archer here in the, this, through the Scottish Creative Industries Partnership. We work across all levels of our organisations. Uh, I, I work directly with uh, Janet and Natalie on a, on a, on a great deal of uh, points around policy and strategy. We work together in the broadcast and TV working group and we all work collectively in support of the work of the industry body, the Digital Media Industry Leadership Group. And I think it's really important that, that we get across that we, sh we share a collective passion that creative industries have tr tremendous growth opportunities. Uh, we work, as I said earlier, a great deal, uh, and we un undertake complementary activity, but we often collaborate. We have done from the early stages of the formation of Creative Scotland. Uh, we work together to launch in partnership with Channel 4, the, the Digital Media IP Fund. That was a £3 million co-investment fund that uh, uh, invested in companies like Tag Games and Dynamo Games. Uh, I think really importantly, we've worked together uh, and we've uh, worked with TRC Media uh, in delivering the uh, Creative Edge project, which is very much seeking to uh, invest in and develop the next generation of business leaders and innovators across all parts of the creative industry. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, our experience and our evidence points to a great deal of effective partnership working between ourselves and Creative Scotland. But, but there's clearly some problem, Mr Smith. I mean, if, 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 if the, the, the story is as good as you say it is, you're, you're not getting that message across to people in the sector who've told us last week that they feel there's a complete lack of leadership? Uh, our experience is that there's a very wide appreciation across the creative industry sectors. We clearly uh, have to uh, continue to, to work as we have been doing with Creative Scotland and, and furthering our discussions with, uh, with IPS and we'll continue to do that around the, uh, the opportunities that uh, we share and believe in. Uh, with regards particularly to the, the screen sectors, the TV and film sectors. But uh, that's something we'll commit to do and we're continuing to have conversations with, uh, with IPS and a few others in the industry. Okay, maybe I could bring Janet Archer in from Creative Scotland. I mean, one, in addition to the, the comments I've, I've, I've already read out, we heard last week from Arabella Page-Croft, who's a film producer in Scotland, I'm sure you know, who was talking about her engagement with Creative Scotland. She told us that there had been 26 meetings between Creative Scotland and Scottish Enterprise. Uh, nothing has happened for our sector, she told us. No intervention has been made to address the systemic market failure. We are pretty depressed and disillusioned. What's your response to that? Well, I'm going to be honest. Um, I think Creative Scotland in its inception wasn't set up in the right way to be able to engage with other public bodies like Scottish Enterprise in an effective way. We've reorganised ourselves under my leadership under the last eight, in the last 18 months and we've now restructured our policy around arts, screen, creative industries. So very specific focus in each area under a director. We're about to appoint a new director of creative industries. Uh, it's a joint appointment with the Scottish Funding Council that creates a bridge between education, innovation and industry and public provision. And I think that will create a, a seedbed for a new way of working uh, and we're very excited about that. We've fed that into SKIP, which I chair, so that's the coordinating body for all of the public, public bodies involved in the creative industries. And SKIP has refreshed, refreshed its terms of reference over the last six months. Uh, it's entered into a new phase of working. We've been conducting some mapping across our agencies in terms of how, how we function and how our respective com component parts of the jigsaw puzzle fit together. And I th I'm confident that we're getting into a, a new way. In respect of film, in, in relation to Creative Scotland's role, Natalie came into post uh, less than six months ago. In that time, she's produced a film strategy for us as an organisation, um, and that's the foundation from which we're going to build in, in, in the future. Having said that, we have invested a significant amount of funding into film production in Scotland since we began. Uh, so over the course of that time, we've spent approximately £17 million on film production for development production, talent development, and attendance at international markets and festivals in, 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 in respect of film. But 26 meetings with nothing happening. What on earth were you talking about? 
from our perspective, things are happening. Uh, I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Natalie Usher, who can tell you a little bit more about that. Yes. So um, we, with Scottish Enterprise, have had um, a number of um, productive meetings um, over the recent months with uh, members of the IPS, and we are working with them to um, help support their specific sector needs, um, for, in, particularly in respect of business support, which is um, where producers in Scotland, the independent producers in Scotland, really face challenges. We recognise them, we identified them, acknowledged them in our film strategy published in October, and we are working with them. Okay, I'm going to, I know other members want to pursue some of these issues. I'm going to bring in Dennis Robertson first. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, really following on from the convener's point, uh, if I can stay with uh, Creative Scotland at the moment, um, part of your vision within your submission states clear and practical strategy uh, in terms of working with the industry. Um, it doesn't seem to be clear, and the strategy doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I accept that six months into a post, um, that it's still quite new. However, uh, and I accept the fact 18 months ago you're looking at uh, changing direction because you accept that there were failures, but we hear about this partnership and collaboration between Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland. And, you know, if we look at creative industry partnership, so where does this partnership and collaboration? It doesn't seem to be happening. It, and if you've had 26 meetings, is it a question of, and excuse me, Mr. Smith, uh, you're talking about the positivity and you've got evidence, but to me, it sounds like there's an awful lot of navel gazing going on. So perhaps Creative Scotland, um, the partnership, collaboration, clear practical strategy, why is that not filtering down to the industry? So as I said, we published our strategy in October. It was well received by the industry. It sets out um, clearly the areas of focus for us um, across the film industry, starting with film education, talent and skills development, development and production, inward investment, distribution, exhibition and audiences. And under each of those heads, we are focusing within the film team and working with our partners across where it's applicable <coughs> in complementary terms with Scottish Enterprise <coughs> or with other um, members of the sector. You're working with your partners. Who's taking the lead? Because one of the one of the criticisms that was very, very, you know, eloquently sort of articulated last week was nobody's taking the lead in this. So you're having your meetings and you're talking about your strategy and you've set out a clear vision, but who's taking the lead? Who's actually engaging with the industry and saying, This is what we have, this is what we can do for you? It doesn't seem to be filtering down. That message is not clear. Creative Scotland is engaging with industry. We set out our vision, we set out our strategy, and we're getting on with that job. The film team itself at Creative Scotland is working with producers, people in the distribution sector. We work with film education. Um, in particular, we're focusing on talent development, which, alongside film production, is an absolutely key part of the industry. Later today, we're going to announce um, a key initiative uh, £450,000 invested through the Scottish Film Talent Network into a new shorts programme. Um, that's the largest amount of money spent on new and emerging talent in the last six years. That's one of the first things that um, we can talk to um, in terms of um, investment and carrying out our strategy. Smith, um, the partnership, the collaborative aspect, um, you were basically, I think, within the submission uh, from Scottish Enterprise, suggesting that it's Creative Scotland that's taking the lead and you're there as a supporting role. Um, are you in the wings just waiting to see what you can do or are you being proactive? We're very much being proactive. Uh, we have contributed extensively to the film strategy for Scotland that Creative Scotland have produced. We're very supportive of their lead role with the screen industries here in Scotland uh, and we're contributing in particular in relation to the, the opportunity to attract more investment into the production infrastructure here in Scotland and to work with the other enterprise agencies uh, to support uh, Creative Scotland's role in trying to uh, secure more production investment 
uh, for film in Scotland, but also to build the capabilities uh, of the companies that work in the, the film sector uh, to tackle uh, the various different opportunities, particularly the international opportunities that exist. Uh, convener is how many more meetings is it going to take before the industry actually feel the benefit? Mr Smith. Well, we'll, con we'll continue to engage in the uh, discussions with Creative Scotland and with, uh, with I IPS. Uh, we have uh, a number of examples of the industry and companies within the industry already getting the benefit of our uh, support collective and individually. Scottish Enterprise has supported more than 100 companies in the, the screen sector, screen industries. We've undertaken uh, a significant amount of internationalisation support for the TV and film sectors, helping them to uh, tackle and access international markets. Uh, we did, in fact, uh, work with IPS3 <laughs> Cooperative Development Scotland to, uh, to help the producers establish the, the consortia, the uh, cooperative IPS uh, 18 months ago, so I would point to that as a very specific so outcome. Or meetings it's going to take? Uh, well, I, yeah. we, we will continue to have yeah. regular meetings as we do as part of our, our business <laughs> with, uh, with I, IPS. Yeah. We believe yeah. we're making progress, uh, as I've pointed to uh, some of the specific outcomes, uh, the support that, that we provide through CDS actually had led to the formal uh, creation of the consortium the IPS cooperative and we're continuing to, to work with Creative Scotland to explore ways that we can uh, help the industry, particularly the uh, IPS organisation. Yeah. Yeah. If I can just move back to Creative Scotland just for a second uh, and maybe Jane, you could maybe answer this as, as being the Chief Exec. How many more meetings do you think it's going to take before the industry feel that there's some benefit working towards what they're trying to uh, and their aspirations? I hope one. Uh, oh, got, fantastic. Got, One more meeting. <laughs> we've got a meeting uh, now scheduled. So the magic number's 27, is it? <laughs> in the diary for uh, myself to meet with Lena Wilson. I met with Lena Wilson before Christmas. We had a very positive discussion around film, uh, and we both um, re restated our commitments to film and between us making it work. We've now got a meeting scheduled for our new chair, chair Richard Finlay, uh, who some of you will know has, has, has come from the television industry um, uh, and, uh, and Scottish Enterprises chair. So four-way meetings taking place very soon to discuss all of these issues. I'm sure the industry is looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I've got, I've got two more members who want to come in specifically on this point. Start with Chick Brody and then Lewis. No, Chick Brody, first of all. Yeah, yes, I wonder if uh, I may ask, good morning by the way, uh, if I may ask Natalie, you said you've just produced your October uh, report. Uh, why is it then that the government uh, is saying that uh, the report is anticipated to be produced by February 2015 from, from uh, SCIP? The partners in SCIP are currently working on and are mapping an impact strategy study which will inform the development of a creative industry strategy 2015-2017. That strategy due to be published in February 2015. Which is it, October or February? They're, they're different uh, ah. reports. So we published Creative Scotland on screen, um, a strategy for um, film set within the screen sector. We published that in uh, October. Um, this is a separate report that Janet can talk about in terms of creative industries. It is. So it's based on Creative Scotland's policy being framed around arts, screen and creative industries as three interlocking elements of our work. And we made a commitment to producing the film strategy as our first strategy uh, under our 10-year plan because we believed that it was necessary because of the, 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 the really important needs within the film sector and its development. We are now looking at the creative industries in the broadest sense, so that's everything from design to architecture, uh, music industry, um, gaming uh, and film that sits within that, so three interlocking gears in terms of how we, we do things and see things. The, create, the broader creative industries framework, in fact, we're calling it, because we don't want it to be a glossy strategy that sits on a shelf. We want it to be a useful We, we don't want to diminish some of the good things that, that, that have been happening, and we talked the gaming industry and also crafts, etc. I just wonder, in terms of the creation of that strategy, um, I talked particularly about television, for example, uh, who have you consulted 
a, from within indigenous independent TV or film production sector? The film strategy came out of our film sector review, um, and that was a, 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 a. We consulted with everybody that we could across film in Scotland and beyond, uh, and in well, terms I, I, of. I'm sorry, to who did you consult? A, in terms of experience within the indigenous TV and film sector? We had a film sector review group which had representatives from across the sector, so producers. Um, we had um, a, a, a range of specialists across film and broadcast within that mix. Um, we have a relationship with Scottish, with uh, STV and BBC, uh, MG Alaba, um, and we talk to them on a regular basis. Uh, we talk to the BBC both in Scotland and in London. And Channel, I, sorry, Channel 4. Can I just ask Charlotte, then on the basis of that, MG Alba has just been mentioned. How involved are HIE in all of the, the development of this strategy? Uh, well, we will work with the Creative Scotland in terms of the development of the strategy. Highlands and Islands Enterprise has also produced its own uh, strategy for the creative industry. In really The national strategy. Why are you producing an independent one and, and yet we have a national strategy? Well, we have a strategy for what we want to do within the Highlands and Islands that works within the overarching framework of national strategies. Uh, you mentioned MG Alaba. We work closely in supporting the work of MG Alaba and have developed the Creative Industries Centre in Stornoway next to MG Alaba, and that has created a cluster of small businesses which are benefiting very much from that synergy of being alongside MG Alaba. In itself, I think you heard from um, the uh, Move On Up uh, about the Katie Morag story, which is a, a great story really to exemplify um, how we've supported an individual business based in Cromarty uh, and this filming of creative uh, Katie Morag taking place in Stornoway, which has created significant jobs and also helped build the reputation of that part of the uh, Scottish contribution towards TV. I'll come back to another question. Yes, Thank you very much. I was struck uh, by Janet Archer's comments on the uh, way in which Creative Scotland was initially set up and the way in which you've refocused that, because we heard last week from uh, Ian Smith and also from Bob Last, who were involved in the uh, body that designed Creative Scotland, and, and both of whom, I think uh, Ian Smith walked away, uh, and, and Bob Last said that he had uh, refused to sign up to the final report because the word leadership had been removed from the final report. Is it your view that what was wrong with the initial setup of Creative Scotland was a lack of leadership, a lack of clear responsibility, a lack of ministerial engagement? What was it that needed to change um, from that initial flawed model uh, in order to take forward uh, the, the, the kind of strategies you've described today? I think part of the challenges, and I think I reference this to... Um, to Parliament in uh, reference in the past to a committee was that in the original setup of Creative Scotland, in the merging of two organisations, both of whom had very different systems and processes and cultures, not enough attention was paid to what I call housekeeping, so the fundamentals of being able to make an organisation run effectively and smoothly in a in a in a in a proper way in terms of its duties as a public body um, and we've done a lot of work over the last year in sorting that in terms of how we how we we're, we're visible in terms of our plan how we're clear in terms of our funding and how we organize our people resource leadership plays into that and what we've done is appointed a director of arts a director of film director of creative industries that gives us a much better locus in terms of being able to negotiate and generate the relationships that we need across the public and across the private sector to be able to create a strong foundation for for, for development and growth uh, and i think we're now in a good healthy robust place to be able to achieve that one one of the things that was highlighted um by some of our other witnesses last week was a sense <coughs> that um scottish screen having uh, carried for come forward from essentially a film perspective uh, and, and now seeking to, uh, your, you as an agency are seeking to take forward a, a distinctive film strategy. There was a bit of a sense, I think, from the television side that they were uh, not uh, at the top table in terms of, of, of your commitments as an agency. How would you respond to that? Do you feel that Creative Scotland recognises the distinct nature of television and the distinct opportunities that are there that are perhaps a little bit different from 
uh, those around film? We do. Uh, I think we also feel quite strongly and, 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 and know very strongly from our industry experience that the, the, the lines are, are, are shifting in terms of the distinctiveness of film broadcast and what happens in terms of digital platforms. Um, I think industry is, is much more dexterous in terms of how it moves across different platforms and I think we need to understand that um, and, 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 and take advantage of that. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for Scotland, frankly, in terms of, 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 of taking a lead role uh, in that because of the fact that we've got an agency that sits across art screen creative industries. We're able to understand that multi-layered uh, essence uh, of, of, of where future opportunities might come through from in respect to digital innovation in a, in a very powerful way. Uh, and our creative industries framework is, is, is centres on that. We've been talking about how we might apply ourselves to doing some really thorough research in, 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 in that space uh, and there's interest internationally in terms of the work that we're signalling we're going to do. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a global discussion, I think, and it, it's one that we, we take very seriously indeed. That's very helpful. Can, can I ask David Smith and Charlotte Wright because this issue of leadership, I think, is one that's come up, if you like, across the board. Do you as enterprise agencies, you both have your distinct strategies for Scottish Enterprise, for Highlands and Islands Enterprise, that's entirely entirely appropriate. Do you regard Creative Scotland as the lead agency in this field? And, and, and in other words, when you're talking about company development, economic development, do you dovetail with what is being said about the creative uh, opportunities by Creative Scotland? Or do you, uh, is, there, is there a lead agency in your view, or is it a case of everyone mucking in together on the same basis. I'm happy to, uh, <laughs> to respond first. Uh, we, we believe very much that uh, the, the overall lead role that Creative Scotland undertake in coordinating the uh, efforts of the public sector agencies and partners is, is very important and uh, we're very supportive of the role that they under, undertake in that regard. <clears throat> I think we would uh, highlight the, the complementary uh, strengths that we all bring to the party, as it were, the, the focus that uh, Creative Scotland clearly have on uh, supporting and driving forward uh, cultural excellence across the creative industries, the work of the enterprise agencies in uh, ensuring that uh, we support businesses here in Scotland to take advantage of the uh, many opportunities that Scotland has across the creative industries and recognising the particular needs, distinctive uh, needs of the, the screen industries in particular were very supportive of Creative Scotland's lead role in the screen industries. Uh, we uh, do not have a separate strategy to the, the point about strategy in relation to uh, film because we, have, uh, we feel the right approach here is to contribute to and support uh, the, the strategy that Creative Scotland have, have put in place and, and we're very clear on what our contribution, what our role is in contributing to supporting the implementation of that strategy. I maybe come in as well there. Um, I mean, I guess we're clear in terms of Highlands Islands Enterprise that our role is about supporting um, individual businesses through what we do in account management, about creating the right uh, infrastructure to support the economy and the sectors, including creative industries, whether that's the Creative Industry Centre in Stornoway that I referenced, or indeed our significant investment into the rollout of next generation broadband for the whole of the Highlands and Islands, which I think we would uh, say is probably the game changer for the sector as a whole. Uh, in working with Creative Scotland, they are then able to help support and develop, for example, those venues through the things that they do in relation to the overall strategy, audience development, talent support, and all of those other elements which bring the complementarity into a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. That's helpful. Finally, uh, the, we, were, we heard last week from John Archer uh, in relation to uh, ministerial engagement, and he described it felt like a major breakthrough to us, he said, when they, got a, when, when they were able to sit down and have a meeting jointly with the culture minister uh, and the, the economy minister. Uh, would, would any of the agencies like to comment on ministerial engagement and leadership in this area? Uh, is it clear to you where ministerial leadership comes from uh, and, and how is the case for film and television and the, and the games industry, how is that case taken forward at cabinet level? We have a very, I hope, we think, we have a very strong relationship with Mrs. Lop, um, who is very clear that she 
wants us to play a pivotal role in driving the agenda for film. Um, clearly, our remit spans, it's an interesting remit because it spans the intrinsically valuable, the socially valuable, and it also spans the commercial creative end of the spectrum. Uh, and in, in, in that instance, we, we, that's where our relationship with the enterprise agencies sit, and that's where our relationship with Mr Swinney um, would sit too. So from our perspective, it's important that we have a dialogue in both directions in respect of the work that we support. Um, there are many examples of, 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 of work projects which start off in an art space, um, perhaps might benefit from a wee bit of arts funding. Um, J.K. Rowling is an example of that, which then goes on to become a, 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 a multi-million pound entity in, 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 in many different ways. So we have to inst understand the ecosystem collectively together. Um, Creative Scotland has, has, has relationships with, 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 with both ends of the spectrum um, and indeed with other government departments as well. Um, and political leadership is clearly key in respect to that. I, I, again, I would say we've, we've got very good and strong uh, relationships with uh, Mr Swinney and Ms Hislop. We have uh, excellent relationships with culture division officials, with uh, officials in our sponsor division within the enterprise departments. Uh, we, again, are very clear on the, the expectations that, that we have as an organisation, particularly to uh, increase in the support for internationalisation to drive up innovation across the creative industries and across all areas of the economy and to, to, uh, to support and increase the level of uh, public and private sector investment going into supporting companies to grow in the creative industries and uh, across the economy. Uh, and, and in, well, just to add the, to that, in terms of the breadth of activity that the enterprise agencies carries out, um, the need to engage across portfolios is something that we do um, quite often, not only in relation to what we do in creative industries, for example, but looking at working with uh, Mr Lockhead's portfolio across things like distilleries and agriculture and other sectors. So we see it very much as part of our role as driven by our uh, engagement and strong relationship with Mr Swinney and Mr Ewing, that there are parts of our um, parts of what we need to do to support the economy, which ha uh, involve that wider engagement. I think, John Lamont, you had a follow-up question on uh, Scottish <coughs> government. Well, uh, Scottish, when was the last time you met with John Swinney and Fiona Hislop together, both of you? Uh, we. Independently, we met with, with... When did you jointly meet with the two ministers? Uh, I'm trying to recall the exact... Mm -hmm. And, and have back, you got any plans to meet them in the near future, me. given what was said in committee last week, which was quite specific in expressing its concerns about the lack of joint leadership and joint working between Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland? Have you got anything in the diary to meet them? We don't have anything in the diary, but I think, given this discussion... Mm. It's well, almost certainly something that we... Can just maybe then, one of the things that was very strongly made last week was the, an argument for a task force, because this is not just a theoretical where our relationships are not very good. If you see um, uh, the industry in Scotland dro dropping behind, not second, possibly fourth, and I think one witness said possibly fifth. One example they gave was the delay on the film studio. So in the Scottish Government's evidence, they say the Scottish Government, in partnership with Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland, is committed to taking whatever action is possible to provide support to Scotland's screen sector. This includes a rigorous and detailed approach to exploring any options that help to improve and enhance Scotland's offer in terms of studio facilities. The process involves assessing what private sector opportunities are available on a case-by-case -case basis and what, if any, public support might be required. Creative Scotland and Scottish Enterprise will make recommendations to Scottish ministers and it goes on to say that the funding has to be in line with EU state rules. People see the issue of the film studio as a classic example of an indicator that actually you're getting your act together, that it's not just about theoretical partnership, but there is something uh, coming out. So can you tell me when that decision will be made? We, uh, we've been <clears throat> working uh, very, very hard together and regularly updating ministers who uh, Ms. Hesselop and Mr. Swinney on, on progress. Uh, this is a complex and challenging project, as I'm sure you'll appreciate, and we're taking a very careful and uh, measured approach to ensure we get the 
the best possible outcome for Scotland in regard to the, uh, the film studio. It, it might be challenging and complex, but it is also urgent. If one of the things Absolutely. that the sector is saying is we need an indication of our ability to work together and practical outcomes to your collaboration, that hasn't happened. You can't tell us even a shortlist or a date when you're going to be able to make a decision. This is not for the committee. I think this is for the sector and for people who feel that decisions are now being made to, to create work in other parts of the United Kingdom and Scotland is losing out. I, I can assure you we're putting every effort into uh, progressing this opportunity. Uh, I I, uh, we, are, we have uh, received five proposals uh, in response to the development brief that we uh, issued last year. Uh, we're undertaking a very careful analysis around those proposals and um, we're currently in confidential negotiations uh, with, with partners. You would and accept would... there's an urgency, Absolutely not just in a... terms of creating the facility, but in signalling that you recognise the scale of the challenge that the, the industry has identified for you? There's absolutely a, a, every urgency and pace within our work, but we're also uh, undertaking this project because of the uh, complex and challenging nature. We're also uh, take, adopting an approach here, which is to ensure that we do absolutely uh, everything uh, in the right approach, the right manner. We, uh, we will uh, take, take this forward with the, the level of scrutiny that's appropriate to this project. And we hope to sus uh, secure a sustainable solution to the opportunity, one which uh, very much offers the best mm -hmm. return for the public purse. I mean, I do regret there's nothing more. Do you agree there should be a task force then that might facilitate this? We are already have a, a uh, a task force in place. We have uh, a joint working group, which uh, Janet, myself, uh, representative from Scottish Government, the head of the Culture Division from the Scottish Government, participates in, and we regularly update Ms Hislop mm -hmm. and uh, Mr Swinney on the progress that we're making. And one last point, if, if, with permission, is one of the, the, the lines that, or the arguments were made last week was this task force was to be broader than just a studio. It was to signal that actually there's a problem and we want to, to really um, drive this. One point was made repeatedly was that the remits of Creative Scotland and Scottish Enterprise are not complementary but contradictory. And that is that um, the demands, that the level of turnover you have um, in order to access Scottish Enterprise support is not doable and it's in conflict. I can't actually remember the detail of what the, the Creative Scotland, you've probably read the evidence yourself. Do you have a, a view on that? Do you think you're actually asking people to fill, fulfil different criteria and therefore it's not possible for people to get the benefits from both organisations? I, my, my view is it absolutely is possible and we are working in partnership to take a collective approach to addressing the opportunity. Uh, the film studio delivery group that uh, has been set up and that we're working on is, is not only looking at the, uh, the opportunity in, around the delivery of film studio, film studio infrastructure, but it's also looking uh, very importantly uh, at the, the need for us to uh, continue to ensure that the incentives and the production finance support that we offer uh, remains competitive and is, is uh, going to, to ensure that if we can secure a studio solution, that that uh, studio solution will have every possible chance of... Uh, succeeding and, 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 and sustaining in the long term? I think we would say we're very comfortable with the way that we're working with Scottish Enterprise on the studio. It's a, it is a complex task. It's a project that has been on the table for many years, I think 20 to 30 years as a proposition. Uh, we ended the last discussion that we had, I think all agreeing that we were closer than we'd ever been before in respect to finding a solution. Um, so we are determined to, to find a way through this. Creative Scotland has also been doing some detailed scrutiny in relation to the conditions that exist at present in relation of support to the film industry uh, and looking at the data that has been coming in to the committee uh, and the data that we're familiar with in terms of other nations and what they're able to offer. Uh, I think we feel that we are, are reasonably well, we stand reasonably well in comparison to, to other nations. Natalie can give you a bit more information on that, but we do think there are gaps and we've identified some very specific gaps in terms of where we think additional support could be brought to bear in respect of, of, of resolving the problem. I know um, we have a couple of 
questions on film specifically, which we'll just come to. But before I bring Joan in, can I just go back to one point, Mr Smith, you made about the task force. Who chairs this task force? It's the working group for mm -hmm. the so film studio no, is chaired by the Scottish Government. Yeah. Right, okay. Yep. Can we say who? Uh, it was chaired by uh, Aileen, Aileen McCann initially, um, and that's now been passed on to Karen Watt. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll bring in um, Joe McCall. Thanks very much. Um, there's obviously been quite a lot of talk about working groups and strategies and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, the Scottish producers, Independent Producers Scotland, actually put a, a plan to you that would have allowed you to give them practical help in terms of your regular funding programme. Um, they had put a, a plan together uh, for Shared Services Centre, which they had been working on with Mike, Mike Kelly, who is obviously a highly respected industry figure uh, who, who works in London. That, that was rejected. Uh, can you tell us why it was rejected? We're not in a position to go into the detail of specifically why any individual application to us was rejected, because that would compromise the business interest of the applicant. Um, it did not meet the criteria for our regular funded scheme, uh, and therefore we were not able to fund it through that route. What we've done since then is we've begun a, begun a conversation with IPS around how we might find an alternative solution to finding funding for elements of that proposition, uh, and we're in, we've, we've had some discussion, we're in dialogue in respect of how we might achieve that. That's the specific um, business sector support that we're currently talking so about. So that was, well, I, 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 they, they've told me that you told them that it was too much money, and they had asked for a million, uh, which is to cover three years for 40 companies. Um, so I don't think that's very much money, that million for 40 companies over uh, three years, given that you had 99 million to give out in that regular funding package. In the context of our very difficult decisions that we had to make, in respect of regular funding, where we had more than twice the amount of ask for the available funding that we had, we were not able to fund that application. Um, it, it didn't score as highly as other applications that we had at that point in time for that process, but we are looking at alternative ways in terms of what we might when be able to do. This is, what the, this is what the industry are telling you they need, they need this business support. <laughs> Um, when are you going to be able to respond to that practically, not with meetings and things like that, but actually with money? What we want to do is get to a position where we agree where public resources should be best, ex best spent, uh, because we want to be absolutely sure that the impact of any public investment is going to, is going to result in, 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 in net gain. That's an interesting point because another point that the, the, the producers and developers have made is that you, you spend some of your film budget on things like festivals and exhibitions. Well, that's for you know, encourage people to go and see films, but what's the point of that if we're not giving the filmmakers money to make films? We've done some scrutiny of our data and looked at our, our investment in, in, in producers from Scotland comparatively to other nations and Natalie I don't know whether you want to um, pull out the figure that you, um, you've, you've been looking at in terms of how we, how we stand in relation to, to particularly Ireland. Um, so just picking up on your po point Joan, um, so our film and television production fund covers development production attendance at markets and festivals so that's producers going to those markets and festivals for their own uh, opportunities to, to create relationships, new partnerships, co-production co relationships, and also to promote their films, make contacts with sales agents, and so on. Um, so that comes from the production fund. There is other wider support uh, that we give, uh, for example, to Glasgow Film Festival or Edinburgh International Film Festival that comes within our regular funding. So they're, they're slightly different uh, areas of funding. <coughs> Doesn't it concern you that so many people in the industry, you know, don't have any confidence in you to deliver for them? We're talking about 40 members of the, this producers' association, going from small businesses to some of our most successful filmmakers, like Black Camel. Um, you know, are, are you not concerned that 
they feel that you're not listening to them and you're not delivering for them? So certainly in the film strategy, which was published in October, we acknowledge that um, there are challenges for producers and we are working with them, specifically as a result of the um, application to regular funding. As Janet said, looking at uh, working on a plan, how we can fund it in order to help with the specific business support needs for the production sector. Um, separately, we work across, as I said before, film education, talent and skills development, which is incredibly important in order to develop the talent that are going to be uh, the ones making the next films. Um, we invest four million pounds a year in development, production, and uh, talent development and um, attendance and marketing festivals. And we also work on distribution, exhibition and audiences. And that's a separate, that doesn't fall within the production fund itself. Right. Talking and, about, sorry. Well, what I wanted to say was that um, one of our roles is about selling Scotland to the world. It's about bringing productions to Scotland. So our location service, which is a fantastic service, um, receives a huge numbers of inquiries from large-scale, high-profile productions. Um, they were at a peak in 2012, which is when the high-end TV tax credit was brought in. So that means the whole of the UK has got the tax credit. Um, so we as a nation have got what everybody else has got. We've got the fantastic locations, and we've also got a really fantastic pool of crew. What we don't necessarily have is what Northern Ireland and Wales have got, and this is what people talk about, um, because we can't offer an additional award of funding to productions to encourage them to come here, to spend their money here. Northern Ireland has got £3.2 million a year for large-scale productions. The calculations that they do on that spend, so for every pound of that £3.2 million that they work, that's for about two projects a year, um, they reckon on getting £10 back into their economy. That's the sort of thing that Scotland needs, in addition to what we've already got. Um, in spite of not having a studio and that additional fund, we have had some successes. We've had Skyfall filming part of their production here. We've had Fast and Furious 6. We've had Dark Knight Rises. We've had some really, really great successes for Scotland. But what we need to be able to do is to offer some funding, which is going to mean that we can compete with others. I mean, my line of questioning is really more about the, the lack of support for producers who are based, based here in Scotland. And if I could just, uh, when we had Scottish Screen, most of the countries that do better than Scotland to have their own screen agency. And there's a very strong feeling in the industry that we have lost out um, by not having Scottish Screen. And one example was uh, that was given to me um, when I was chatting to the film producers was... Um, in the big festivals, you talk about the money that you spend going to festivals. When we had Scottish Screen, uh, they were very practical in linking up our developers with the people who could help them, who could co-produce. You don't do that. You have a party in Cannes. Um, they said it's absolutely hopeless. You, you don't do you know, that linkage because you don't have the expertise to do it, um, which I found quite shocking. And it's just because you, you don't have what Scottish Screen has. And I wondered if you could counter that criticism. Um, so, um, at the major festivals, Toronto, Cannes, Berlin, um, Scotland um, comes under the umbrella of the UK Film Centre. What that offers is a place for producers to go, IT facilities, uh, places to have their meetings, so that is a focus for them. Um, we also uh, make sure that what we're doing is um, encouraging producers to meet their networking sessions. There are all sorts of other things that are offered at those um, opportuni uh, opportunities for producers. Equally, we also run the market, uh, market leaders program. Um, we take, um, it's about £100,000 that we invest in that each year, specifically to take producers to markets and festivals to introduce them to sales agents for exactly what you've described well, so we run we run those the, programs. The, the, the feedback we're, we're getting is that um, it's, um, it's it's not working for them. Um, wh why? I mean, it's not your it's not your decision to make. But would you not agree that Scotland does need its own screen agency? It would be more effective if Scotland has its own screen agency, like these other countries. Creative Scotland has got a team of eleven people. Um, including me, working uh, in the film team. 
they are a fantastic, knowledgeable and extremely experienced group of people. Um, I have every confidence in them and I'm very happy to be working with them and working with the sector with them. All of their, and one criticism was made, and which was acknowledged in the film strategy, is that there was a lack of visibility of the film team. Um, so that is something that I am addressing, I'm working on, and we're going to be uh, ensuring that that is less of a case in the future. And equally, across Creative Scotland, we also have um, communications, uh, media and PR, we have funding operations, finance teams, and we also have business affairs. So it's not just a team of 11 people, it's, it's a broader team than that. The Scottish Screen had 35 people working for it. And I think it's important to remember that Creative Scotland was established in the context of public sector reform, in the context of, of making back office savings in order to put as much money into industry as, 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 as is possible. We've done that overall. We saved about a third of our, 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 our costs in terms of admin costs. Um, I think we function very well. Uh, the amount of funding that goes directly into film is broadly the same at Creative Scotland as it was in, 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 when we had Scottish Scream. Um, we, we're assertive in, in respect of saying that we want to grow that, but we're also very cognizant of the fact that our budgets are such that the only funding that we have to spend on film, uh, or the majority of the funding that we have to spend on film, our infrastructure support is supported through grant and aid, is lottery funding, um, and, 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 and that comes with, with lots of calls in, 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 in terms of, of its spending. Back up the producer's point, though, because um, if the funding's the same and the number of films being made has gone down, then clearly something's not working. I suppose I would question the rationale of setting up a separate agency as opposed to which would cost undoubtedly cost more to the public purse than providing a little bit more public funding to ensure that production more production funding is is, is available to to producers in Scotland. And convener, I've got one quick question for, for Scottish Enterprise. And uh, it was interesting when Sh Charlotte raised the issue of um, Katie Morag um, that, that um, you, you supported. Um, I'm quite interested in um, the help that Scottish Enterprise cannot give to my smaller businesses that Highlands and Islands Enterprise does, and not just in creative industries. I represent the south of Scotland, and one of our big problems is that account managed companies. Um, many of our best companies don't qualify for account management. Now, that's also an issue that's been raised by the film industry with, re with relation that there are no film companies that are account managed because the way that they, the way that they operate is they'll go from very, very, very small operations and then they have to expand very rapidly you know, when, when they're making a film. And you, your set-up isn't set up to, um, to respond to that. Um, and um, I wondered if you would care to comment on that and whether perhaps with Highlands and Islands, um, with the threshold being lower, um, you are better able to respond to it and that's why you were able to support Katie Morag. I'm very happy to, to comment. Um, I would say that uh, just because we don't uh, lead the overall engagement with the, the screen industries doesn't mean to say that TV and film are not very important for us as, as sectors. We have supported over 100 companies in the, the screen industries across the, t the TV and film sectors in the last few years. Uh, we support in a variety of different ways. We've supported, for example, the Producers Alliance in cinema and television to uh, undertake more internationalisation efforts with trade missions to uh, places like China and India. Uh, at the micro level, which is a great point you've picked up on, uh, we're very much working in partnership with uh, Business Gateway uh, in particular, but we have through Cooperative Development Scotland uh, and our work that we do there, work to support a lot of the very small independently minded creative industries companies, including across the, the screen sector, to help them to uh, take a consortia approach where they, they can come together and perhaps get the benefit of uh, more of a collaborative approach to, to, uh, to negotiate or to, to go after business. And about 20 uh, consortia companies within the creative industry sector have been uh, formed in the last few years as a result of the support the SE offers through Cooperative Development Scotland. So a couple of examples there of the, the work and support that we're given. Can I maybe just, uh, I'll just to amplify, um, Highlands and Islands Enterprise obviously applies the criteria in making those choices about account management which reflect both the, the need and opportunity for businesses in our area. 
it is fair to say that the uh, the scale of businesses across the Highlands and Islands is very much at the micro scale. And in the particular case with uh, Move On Up and Katie Morag, that offered the additional opportunity both of supporting a company on the east of our region in Cromarty, but ensured that they were going to deliver those economic benefits in uh, one of our areas that perhaps has more challenges, which is uh, around the Western Isles and Stornoway, and has created lasting benefit through developing skills. And, and it's those aspects that are important to us in um, being able to live at both account management, but making those decisions that reflect, in the case of creative industries, very much the micro um, nature of the industry and the fact that they work through collaboration and networks which tend to form and reform and change. So we have to be flexible in how we go about that support. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, Richard Lyle. Thank you. Dina, um, several members have questioned you this morning on film and TV. Can I question you on video games? <coughs> and you made, uh, David Smith, you made a, a comment in regards to the some of the excellent games that are being produced in Scotland and, and sold abroad. And in the, the Scottish Enterprise submission, you said that you have a, um, a considerable level of engagement, achieved success and investment, innovation and internationalism. But we move on to Creative Scotland, and basically we've been told that Creative Scotland has no legacy of working with the games sector, uh, industry, no in-house experience with the games industry. Uh, what are you doing to resolve that, and who, do, who does that come under? Does that come under Natalie also, or does that come under someone else? And are you both um, promoting the games industry within Scotland? We are promoting the games industry within Scotland, um, and it will come under our new director of creative industries. Um, we also have a, a portfolio manager, so a head of digital, um, who holds the direct hands-on responsibility for, for games. Um, we've supported games development through our innovation fund, which has been running year on year since the start of Creative Scotland. Um, we supported video games development and experimentation, um, I think, in the region of a million pounds a year since that time. Um, uh, we, the, as the innovation fund was a million pounds a year and games was part of that. Um, Companies that have benefited include Ludometrics, another visitor, Interface 3, um, Hippotrix, Zapcoder, Secret Experiment. Um, we have worked with Nesta and AHRC on the digital R&D program, um, and we've recently launched Time to Shine Digital, um, which is a program for young people um, looking to generate ideas from young people in respect of what they might want to do on digital platforms um, that's just gone up for, uh, for applications. We've worked with BAFTA to celebrate and raise the profile of the games industry through providing support for their awards, workshops, masterclasses and sharing good practice. We've worked with Abate University's Dare to be Digital uh, which encourages young and emerging talent um, and through that, new finance for games like Blazing Griffin, Quartet Llama, Stormcloud and Future Fossil Studios has come through. Games can also apply to our new open project funding um, for early development. Um, so we're comfortable that we can, we're, we have um, evidence in place that, that demonstrates that we have done uh, a lot for games, but we recognise that more can be done. Uh, we need to understand the games industry in Scotland better. Uh, we need to work with the games industry to make routes to market clearer and easier to navigate for developers. And our new creative industry strategy um, framework recommends the, the d development of a, a specific policy around games. We're looking at that very seriously. We'll be discussing that with our partners. Um, point of that would be to work with the sector to develop a, a cohesive voice and secure routes both to a domestic market but also to an international market through that work. Um, it's got to be sector-led. From our point, it's got to be industry-led. Um, we need to work with the games sector very closely uh, to work through how we do that. Excellent. You've rhymed off. Sorry, David, you were going to uh, say something. If you just uh, add or further add to that, we've worked with uh, industry through supporting um, the formation and supporting the work of the Digital Media Industry Leadership Group, which uh, also has heavy representation from the game sector. We've, we've uh, undertaken that work, that industry-led approach, since 2009. Uh, th three of the witnesses that you had here a couple of weeks ago on uh, games uh, are either current or former members of that industry leadership group. So our overall approach has been 
very much steered and informed by uh, the views of uh, industry, particularly members of the uh, games industry. That strategy, the digital inspiration strategy, uh, gave us a very strong steer and direction for, for our work and the work of our partners, and it was to put more uh, attention, put more focus on helping companies to move up their value chain, to, to move from just the creation of content up towards the development of uh, platforms. Uh, an excellent example of that, I think, being the success that uh, FanDuel are currently experiencing and the support that we've given them through the Scottish Investment Bank, uh, funding uh, funding them through various different rounds to the current uh, recent round of £70 million pounds worth of uh, funding that they've managed to secure in VC markets, enabling them to fund the development of their platform further and fund the expansion of their operations uh, here in Scotland and to help them try for business development in the uh, US. I highlight that example in particular because I think it really speaks to uh, the advice and the direction of the strategy laid out in 2009, and it's very much steered and guided our, our work. Uh, we also uh, put in place, uh, as a direct result of our work with the Digital Media Group, the uh, Interactive Scotland, uh, who have provided support to around 850 companies across the digital media sectors in Scotland, and that's very much uh, about trying to encourage companies to uh, innovate and collaborate around the various different opportunities that we have in digital and digital media. So just, just some examples of the of the work. But I think the, the key point there is, as Janice just touched on, it's vitally important that our, our work is uh, informed by the views and needs of industry. Yeah, I think it was one of the industries that actually was complimentary about you guys rather than the, the film and TV mob who were, who were uh, damning in some ways and and, and sadly, one of my constituents said that Creative Scotland was a shambles, but we'll, we'll, we'll take that aside. Can I stay on the, 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 the games? Um, tell me, why, you know, Janet Archer, you've just told me all the great things you're doing, but why have you not published a sector review of the video games industry? Uh, why, why is that, and when do you intend to do it, since you've rhymed off all these fantastic things that you're doing now? The... Uh, the sector reviews that we've been publishing uh, were initiated before I joined the organisation and they focused on the arts and they focused on screen. Um, so plans were not put in place to think about the v vast range of, of industries that sit under our creative industries banner at that stage. So our approach to that has been to rethink how we function and refocus our policy around arts, screen, creative industries we can't do everything at once, so we're completing the current commissioned suite of sector reviews, uh, which means that we're completing literature and publishing, which sits under the Creative Industries remit, um, and the arts, um, and we're completing our visual arts uh, sector review, which is also uh, work which is, is about the arts, but it's also the commercial creative end of, of, of the visual arts too. Um, we're then moving on to think very hard in terms of what we do about the creative industries. The strategy framework is the first step in respect of doing that. Within the strategy framework, there are some recommendations to look in detail at specific elements of the creative industries, and our next step will be to move into that, and games is part of that mix. But, you know, just if you, if you allow me, because, you know, just one last question. The greatest respect to you. When I worked in, a, in an industry, we had, like, 17 balls in the air at one time. You know, you have Natalie, you have maybe other people within your organisation. So why can't you? And, you, and you've just said, when you started off, you admitted, you know, it, I wouldn't say it was a shambles, but you admitted that things had been done wrong and you were now correcting it. So why can't you drive everything forward now and get what is what is being criticised by other sectors in Scotland, get it right? We are driving it forward. I was firmly of the view that we needed to get it right. So my first 18 months has been very focused on, on, on planning, on, on, on funding and getting that right, which has been a big job in respect of Creative Scotland's operation uh, on our systems and processes and on our people resource. And we're now moving into developing strategies for screen, which we've done, creative industries, which we're about to publish in draft form, and, and arts, which will be the next step. I think it's really important to get those absolutely right. We can't afford to get it wrong. If we do it too fast, we'll not, we, we just simply won't get it right. But the commitment is clear. Uh, once we publish the Creative Industries Framework, industry will be able to see 
what our commitment is over the next three years, and we'll move through those tasks in, in, in a way where we use our resource to effect, best effect, and, and, and we'll do it well. Firmly, your door. Thank you. John's got a brief supplementary on, on video games. Well, John, yeah. we'll come back to you. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, on games, um, we had a really fantastic event at the Parliament that the committee organised uh, for the game sector when we were able to see what they did and, and speak and speak to the um, developers um, face to face. One thing that struck me from speaking to them, one thing that they all said was that the, their biggest need was support for marketing because particularly now when there's such competition globally, you know, how does your app get up there? How do you even get noticed? And uh, that, that was what they all said independently. And I wondered, I know that you, you, know, you, you help them with international events and so on, <laughs> but in terms of individual companies, what, what, what more can you do to help, help them with that marketing and selling their product? Thank you for the question. I, I also enjoyed that, uh, that evening. I enjoyed meeting many of you that evening and uh, meeting with the companies and seeing some of the great examples of the uh, the companies that were present, Fanjul, Team Rock, uh, all companies, organisations that uh, we're very familiar with and have worked a great deal with. Um, what uh, what we are doing in addition to the uh, the extra support that we've been putting into internationalisation uh, and support for uh, taking companies, games companies to international events like the Game Developer Conference in uh, San Francisco, where around. 30 companies participated last year and generated, uh, they, they fed back to us about £45 million pounds worth of uh, opportunities at that event. What we are doing though, in, in addition is uh, through the work of Interactive Scotland, also through the, the work that we're undertaking uh, in partnership with uh, the Scottish Government around uh, the Scottish Edge competition is, is providing more opportunities uh, and support for excellent early stage companies to, to be able to develop uh, their ideas sharpen up their the marketing approach and be able to com compete for and get additional funding to help them to, uh, to develop the marketing plans and, and uh, take the, you know, help them to, uh, to take their products to market. So. Could, could I maybe yes, just, just add briefly from um, Highlands and Islands perspective, although the game sector is not a significant one in our region, um, we have a, an approach which is uh, supported through our trade industry networks which uh, support showcasing and event attendances and we cover games through the uh, screen and broadcast tr trade network. Thank you. Gordon McGill. Okay, thanks very much, convener. Um, we've heard this morning uh, an awful lot about screen industries, the film sector, etc. Uh, I want to bring the focus back into independent television production. Um, and it would be helpful if any answers, you know, referred to independent television production rather than the wider sector. Um, last week we heard that um, BBC and Channel 4 are increasing uh, production in Scotland or intend to increase production in Scotland. And I'm keen to understand the benefit that Scotland derives from that. I mean, we've heard from the evidence, the written evidence from Titanic Gap, um, Rick Hill, who was the chairman of Northern Ireland Screen Commission, who said, your politicians have been superb at working to ensure the BBC and UK public service broadcasters invested in Scotland. So we've done the work of getting the work to Scotland. What I'm keen to understand is who benefits from that work. So a question that I asked last week, and I would like to ask the panel this week, is, and this is specifically to Scottish Enterprise. In 2009, Scottish Enterprise said in its report, growing the television broadcast and production centre, that one of its main objectives was increasing the scale of independent production companies, increasing the number of independent production companies with a turnover of 10 million, with a substantive base in Scotland from one to six by 2013. What support was put in place to achieve this and how successful was it? Uh, the support that we've uh in place has been uh, you know, consists of our overall account management support, the support that we undertake through uh, our work and engaging with the, the TV companies around uh, supply chain development. We've provided support through our uh, innovation products and services for uh, people like the, the comedy unit, for example, to help them to develop uh, and uh, and that's a broadcaster, is it? It's a, an independent right. body company. 
helped set up and we've helped them to develop their uh, their IP and to take take forward uh, opportunities in markets outside of Scotland by uh, using the IP that they've generated around some of their, their, uh, their comedy and comedy productions and take that to other, mm. other markets. So those are some examples of the, the work and the support we've undertaken. Just to be clear, did we actually achieve the six companies of getting turnover of £10 million and how many independent production companies were under account management? Uh, it, I'll need to come back to you on the on the on the first point. Uh, I believe we did, but I want to come back to you with the uh, uh, specific uh, figures of, around that. On the second point, the number of uh, television companies under account management are, are fourteen at present. Okay, and we've we've account managed a lot more previously because you'll as you'll appreciate account management is a is not a, a permanent process it's, it's, it's appropriate to mm -hmm. companies at various stages of their development and growth. Right, okay. On that development growth, and this is widening the question out to both Scottish Enterprise and Highland and Islands Enterprise, we have available regional selective assistance available for investment in projects that will create a safe safeguard jobs in Scotland. We know that you provide RSA to branch offices of income in London companies, but you know, often as as we witnessed with Shed, as soon as the lift and shift that we heard an awful lot about uh, last week happens, these companies close. So, given that the indigenous independent TV sector is worth roughly about thirty million pounds, how do you engage with them, and what level of support do you provide to them uh, of that RSA as a percentage, roughly, do, you know, of, of what you give to incomers? I mean, how much support, how much regional selective assistance do both organisations give of their total uh, package to independent indigenous production companies? I'm happy to take the question because Scottish Enterprise operate the RSA programme on, on behalf of the whole of Scotland. Uh, and the, uh, the answer is that more than 90%, certainly within the creative industries of uh, the support, both in terms of number of companies and the value of the support uh, that we provide, uh, including RSA support, goes to Indigenous companies here in Scotland. I don't have uh, off the top of my head or available uh, right now the precise figure for Indigenous TV companies, but I, I can get that for you and come back to you with that, that information. But I think the 90% figure is, is broadly representative. It's certainly true of the creative so industries. Rather than Creative the ministers as a whole, yeah. Approach. But I'd need to come back to you on the specific figure around the TV. Okay. Just, if I could just add from uh, Highlands and Islands perspective, we um, haven't, I, I don't think, I can think of a case where we've used RSA to support a Highlands and Islands Indigenous company, but we uh, do use our grant and aid to support our account managed companies. And additionally, the uh, screen and broadcast trade network, which I mentioned, gives support to them in terms of industry collaboration, networking, training, and uh, support for marketing. Okay. Uh, moving on to Creative Scotland, uh, in your submission you've uh, highlighted that you allocate funding of £9 million for Screen and £7 million for Creative Industries. So of that £16 million, how much of that is applied directly to independent television production companies uh, for, say, research and development work or how much advocacy do you provide for the television sector? A, a, a relatively small amount of that goes into, into the television sector. So we've put in some funding, so for example, 170k over three years into um, development finance for STV. Um, we've, we've, we've put some funding into um, Bannon with M MG Alaba. Um, so we are selective. Uh, we have prioritised film uh, because of the limitations on the resource, resource that we've got available to us. We do think that there is a there's room for a discussion around other kinds of solutions in terms of investment in in, in productions um, we think that there's a discussion to be had in terms of recognizing that investment in television is often about investing in the production not in the company we know that some production companies don't turn over 10 million pounds and therefore fall through the gap at the moment um, and 
we also know that you have to move very quickly if you're going to generate business for Scotland, if a company comes to us with match finance in place uh, and we can't respond quickly in relation to that, often that will be lost and, and, and go elsewhere. So I think there is a discussion to be had in terms of how overall Team Scotland applies itself to the television industry. So the two examples you gave was STV and, M and uh, MG Alpa both of which are broadcasters, so would that would say that the 170,000 basically don't give anything to the independent television sector? So of our £4 million um, TV, film and TV broadcast fund, um, we are, as Janet has said, we have um, decided to focus on film. However, we have invested in independent um, film production alongside broadcasters, for example, the Katie Morag production, uh, we put money into Stonemouth, we put money into Ban and the Gallic Drama, uh, we have uh, invested in a number of other first series. Our, what we feel that we can do with our limited resources is to help the producer into the first series um, and then hope that they will then be commissioned for a second and that they can move on at that point um, and commercialise that production. But we are <coughs> limited uh, with our resources available. Mm. And, and focused on TV drama. And ju um, just just a final question, um, the, and this is for the panel. The TV working group have repeatedly asked for support to expand the research and development capacity for indigenous production companies. What steps have the panel taken to augment the R&D capacity and promote engagement with commissioners within the BBC and Channel 4? We've certainly been uh, active in working with the TV working group uh, to work with broadcasters and particularly to focus on the, the opportunities to support the, particularly the indigenous sector but the supply chain to undertake uh, more innovation and to uh, help support them to address more of the, the opportunities and, and needs uh, coming out of the requirements of the major broadcasters. So we've. Uh, participate in those working groups and it's predominantly through our uh, account management efforts and our support to uh, individual companies but also the working relationship that we have and the work that we're doing with uh, High and Creative Scotland to uh, support the uh, things like the, the Gaelic media broadcasting supply chain that, that is, the, is the kind of work that we're engaged in to, to grow and support the supply chain and help them to innovate. Maybe just additionally to follow up on David's point there, we did a, a specific piece of detailed work in relation to um, Gaelic as an asset uh, across uh, industry, but particularly focusing on what the opportunities are for uh, Gaelic production in, in TV and film and a following up with that with uh, Creative Scotland and, and SDI particularly. That's a specific piece of research which demonstrated the value both culturally, heritagely and economically of um, Gaelic. All right, thank you. Um, I'm conscious of the time. We've got about 10 minutes left. Patrick Harvey has been very patient and I've got three other members who want to ask supplementaries who I will bring in if we have time at the end. But Patrick. Thanks very much, convener. Um, Good morning. Um, it struck me that a couple of paragraphs from the Creative Scotland written submission actually echo very strongly a lot of what we've heard from other organisations who, who are raising concerns and criticisms. Um, on the section on film and TV, you talk at one point about the, the potential and the fact that the industry has shown what it's capable of achieving, but you acknowledge that the industry, Scotland's screen industry, is currently falling behind the other UK nations. Uh, there was some debate, I think, about whether we're in third place or fourth place or fifth place or where we sit in that ranking order. You then say uh, the industry is not operating to its full potential because it does not have access to resources that are comparable to other nations and regions. Barriers include the lack of a uh, large-scale permanent studio facility and appropriate levels of production funding, infrastructure and money. And so we heard, you know, you, I think you talked about a £4 million pound budget, some of the written evidence suggests three and a half. Even if it's four, that compares with 10 million in Northern Ireland, Yorkshire 15 million, Wales 30 million, further afield looking at Finland with 25 million euros, Sweden 43, Norway 60, Denmark 65. Uh, and we've had the, the long discussion as well about infrastructure and, uh, uh, and, and the, the studio issue. And yet, 
in your three year plan that I've got here, the the most relevant commitments I can find are on funding we will work to find the right balance between films' cultural and economic impact in the allocation of funding. And then a few paragraphs later, um, as part of our work with Scottish Government, Scottish Enterprise, to establish a film studio, this is your commitment over the next 12 months, we will focus on the requirement for the studio to operate in a way that supports and serves Scotland's own productions as well as international mobile productions. It's all a bit non-specific, isn't it? So the film studio has to uh, primarily attract the large scale productions. That's where the the bulk primarily exist. Clearly, but we've we've stated that that's a, a priority. It's absolutely a priority. Scotland needs a film studio. We're working extremely hard, as we've heard, to do that. But what we want it also to be able to do is to uh, support the indigenous film production sector. Uh, now, in terms of business models. That can be uh, quite a balancing act, but that's what... I'm not trying to suggest that this is an important thing to focus on. Uh, I'm just trying to suggest that whether in the 12-month actions or the three-year actions in the same document, there isn't anything that says, here's when we intend to be open for business. Scotland is already open for business. We accept, and it's certainly set out in the strategy, that we need to do more, and we have highlighted ways in which we can do more across all areas of the film industry, not just production, but you know, in order to, working on film education in order to develop the filmmakers of tomorrow, the new producers of tomorrow, as well as the audiences of tomorrow. When do we expect but, there to be a studio, if that's, if that's what's going to happen? When do we expect that to be So we, we've talked open? about the studio already, but just to talk about Scotland being open for business. Um, I was talking about the infrastructure, not the kind of yeah. concept of Scotland being open. Of course. But what I would like to say is that um, Scottish production spend figures for 2013 were 33.6 million. Those are the highest figures ever for Scotland. That year included part of the first season of Outlander, which was a production that... Scotland attracted, it's been here, it's been spending money, it's been engaging crew, it's been incredibly significant for Scotland. 2014 figures, we, our projections suggest that they will be dramatically higher than 2013. That is an incredibly good news story for us. And what we need to do is also to capitalise on that, to build on it by, in my view, having an inward investment fund in the same way that Northern Ireland does. They've got 3.2 million, we should have something like it. Northern Ireland spends 1.2 million on independent productions a year. We spend a bit more. So and you can make, is that a decision Scottish Enterprise have to make or is that a decision the Scottish Government have to make? I think we have to make the case and we have to discuss it with our partners. But um, to me it seems Who's, like a relatively... decision is it to do that? It's, not, well, it's certainly not my decision, but I would know what I want to advocate for Scotland. Would it be a Scottish Scotland. government decision? Is that something we need to ask the ministers about? I think it is something yeah. that we okay. need to ask the ministers Thank about. You. Finally, um, you, we talked about uh, an, another publication that's due, did you call it the Strategy Framework, next month? Creative it's Industries Framework. Creative Industries Framework. Would it be a good idea, I'm assuming that hasn't gone to the printers yet, yeah? No, it's, okay. it's going Would it be a good idea if that document set out a clear timescale of when you expect not only a decision on approving the film studio, but how long you expect to Scotland to have to wait before it's open. I know it can be problematic to set these dates when you're building stuff. Trams, parliaments, sometimes the date slips, yeah? Everybody understands that sometimes the date slips, but a deadline focuses the mind. Wouldn't that be a helpful thing to put in that document? If I, if I could... Uh offer a point here. We, we, we want to secure a successful outcome in relation to film studio infrastructure as, as much as anyone. Uh, we know from experience that it's time well spent at this stage if we, we make sure that we, we undertake the thorough uh, analysis and evaluation of the proposals that we have. We do want to make sure that uh, we learn from and we apply the learning from experiences of others. For example, the experience in Spain on the Theodad de Leith complex that was developed uh, in Valencia and was then found at a later stage not to be uh, state aid compliant. Also the experience in Wales where uh, Dragon, a major investment was made in Dragon Studios which then pro proved uh, to be commercially unsustainable. 
in the long term. So what we are doing is moving at pace. We want to make sure that uh, we undertake all the necessary uh, evaluation work, but we will uh, reach a, uh, an outcome as soon as we possibly can, and we're working at pace to, to do that. And the, the decision, once uh, we're already in a position to make, we will be in a position to make a recommendation to to our, our board and work with partners uh, to, to be able to deliver that. So I would hope to be able to do that in the relatively near future. Yeah. I think it's important to say that, well, I suppose I wanted to just illustrate um, Natalie's um, account of some of the successes that we've been able to achieve. Uh, it's our understanding, looking at the figures, we think that the first year of Outlander has actually been more successful than the first year of Game of Thrones. Uh, so that's a big step up in terms of what we're achieving as a nation. Um, we do have some some not enough, but some studio provision in Scotland already. Otherwise, we wouldn't have Outlander in place. We know that Bannon is, 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 is operating from Sky. We know that on Stornoway, there's almost a hidden studio, which I visited, um, but which is open for business. Uh, so there is some provision in, in, in Scotland as it stands at the moment. What we're missing is something significant in the, in the central belt area, um, which, which, which we know needs to be built on. Um, so I think those, those, those are important points. In terms of the solution, it's a three-legged stool, so it has to be about funding, it has to be about talent development, and it has to be about the studio as three knitted together entities. And if we can get those right, then we'll be able to get Scotland into that next stage of where it, it outputs strongly in, in, across film and screen. Thank you, Convener. I'll, I'll just finish with the word please. <laughs> okay, we are almost out of time. I've got three members who want to come in, and uh, if they're all extremely brief, we'll try and get them all in, and extremely brief answers if possible. Thank you very much. Uh, just uh, saying to Natalie that she's about to make a, a good announcement this afternoon. I'll be very careful. My business experience tells me that people look at these messages when you get good news, and tomorrow I think you're going to get some bad news from from because I don't know where the buck stops. I'm confused, you know. And particularly if I look at your strategy, your business plan, you your plan, particularly in terms of internationalisation. I'm totally confused. So can each of you tell me, very briefly, what is your prime outcome internationally for film and television? Okay. Briefly. Well, I, I'm happy, happy to start. Our prime outcome for the creative industries is to uh, support as many companies as possible to, uh, to grow. Well, that's, that's a contentious point. We understand well, for, you've done some for, good work for, elsewhere. For television and film, I'm, I'm very clear that uh, the lead responsibility for the promotion of television and film and for the attraction of inward investment uh, lies with my, my colleagues in Creative Scotland. Where does the buck stop? Who makes the decision on I, these international well, well, I'm not sure I can be Mr. Anywhere. Smith, I think it's just past the buck. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can be any clearer because uh, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what we... I understand and I, and I agree. Our vision for yeah. film and screen and television in Scotland is for us to be able to compete with other nations within the UK and beyond that. We set out the strategy. I, Janet has highlighted the three elements that make up the stools that's going to give us the opportunity to, to step up and achieve that. It's the studio, it's funding, it's talent and skills development. No, 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 the, buck stops, the buck stops with you. Yeah, the buck stops. Okay, We've set out a strategy. I take okay. responsibility for it. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's important to say, though, that the resourcing of yeah. our ambition is a shared responsibility yes, of yeah. because the way that budgets are applied in Scotland means that we have to join up our collective resources in order to be able to deliver um, our shared objectives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Briefly, John Lamont. Wonder whether I mean, we haven't even got to skills development in Scotland in their role, which seems to me there's a half dozen organisations talking about that as well. Um, could you please just confirm that you recognise you don't have to sort everything in order to make progress? And do you understand the significance of the decision on the film studio? And the other request I would make is there are a number of requests made in the evidence from organisations to Greater Scotland and Scottish Enterprise, which we've not been able to reach today. I wonder if it would be possible for you to look at those, for example, directing resources into Creative Scotland from Scottish Enterprise and see if you think these are things that you could deal with. The biggest ask of all was an energy round 
a task force overall, and I wonder if you can maybe respond in writing to specific evidence that we were given, which we can't reach today. We'll be happy to do so. Yeah. Okay. And Lastly, and briefly, hopefully, Dennis Robertson. Uh, I'm always briefly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> directly to Creative so, Scotland. Um, uh, my colleague Gordon MacDonald mentioned it just in the passing in his questioning. Lift and shift. How much of a role can you play to try and resolve the problems that the industry is talking to us about, about the lift and shift? Because if you're developing indig indigenous uh, companies uh, and workforces, lift and shift is a huge problem. Do you mean specifically in television or...? or yes, specifically in television. Are you engaging in that discussion? Do you so have a role to play? We have a role to play. We are part of the film and uh, the TV working group and um, we have a uh, good working relationship with the broadcasters and the work of that uh, group is, is to focus on that specifically. We recognise it and we are trying to address it. And I was at a meeting with the BBC Trust last week where that very issue came up. Um, so we are now in dialogue in terms of what we can do in our role um, as the lead agency for film and screen in respect of that issue. Okay, thank okay. you. Right, we are out of time. Um, can I uh, thank the panel for answering all our questions? It's been, a, been a quite a long session and we've covered a lot of ground that's been very helpful to the committee. Uh, next week we are meeting the uh, Minister and then we'll think about a report which will come out in due course. Uh, but uh, thank you on behalf of the committee and uh, we will have we will now move into private session and have a short suspension. Thank you.